So, um, some of you uh, probably saw your book reviews got graded. Okay, so uh, I have about seven more. Okay, um, I have no other grading to do right now, so I will be doing those this week. Okay, I'll be wrapping them up. Okay, um, so know that's coming. Um, we still got we still got a little bit to do here before we can get to Pearl Harbor. Um, last week, uh, I talked to you guys about the Battle of Britain. Okay, let me do a little bit of review, okay? Let's just get back into this, okay? So, it starts with Germany, right? And then Italy, okay? Mussolini and Hitler. Uh, Hitler starts to violate the Treaty of Versailles, rearms the Rhineland in 36, uh, wants the Sudetenland, uh, takes Austria, right? Gets the Sudetenland with the Munich Pact, handed to him. Six months later, Hitler takes the rest of Czechoslovakia, right? Then Britain and France promise that if Poland, Greece, or Romania are invaded, they will go to war. Okay? And Hitler signs non aggression pact with Russia. They decide to split Poland. Poland is invaded from the east and the west, okay, and is divided within about a month. For six months, there's a phony war in Europe. There's no fighting as Hitler moves his armies back to Western Europe to make sure his Western flank is defeated before he invades the Soviet Union. Yes? Everybody with me? Then, Britain and France declare war, okay? And Hitler begins invading Western Europe, starting with Denmark, Belgium, Norway, the Netherlands, Luxembourg. France falls in two weeks through the Maginot Line, through the Ardennes Forest. The British and French troops get pushed back to Dunkirk, and they save the day, okay? Shortly thereafter, the bombs will start raining on Britain. Churchill takes command as prime minister, sets the stage. We will never surrender. Okay? The Royal Air Force, along with the, the Air Defense Ministry, is going to find a way to not allow Germany to gain air superiority over the English Channel and southern England. They will hold them off. Operation Sea Lion, phase one, air superiority, not accomplished. Yes, we can thank radar for that. We can thank the Spitfire for that, the Hawker Hurricane for that, the pilots of the RAF for that. That came from many different countries, not just British, but Polish pilots, Czech pilots, and yes, even American pilots. Yes, and that's pretty much where I left off. Good? Now. Like I said before, guys, uh, I have way too much information here to share with you. So while I was in graduate school, I wrote a really good paper called Citizen Fortress, Britain, Citizen Survival Tactics and Home Defensive Measures During the Battle of Britain. I got a 93. Was that written before you were born? Right around the time you were born. Okay. <laughs> 2005, I believe. That was a good year. Can I get some light in the back, please? Okay. So, for me, this is kind of interesting. There's 48 million Britons, yes? And all of them, all of them are going to be affected. Turn to the right. There you go. Yes. This came before you had Alexa. Alexa, turn on the light thing. Okay. All right. Oh, stop it. Forty-eight million Britons. Now, I've already told you guys a little bit about this. Three million children were sent off to the countryside. Yes. This is what we get from uh, uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Okay. This is gonna ever work. Okay. Thank you. All right. So this was not an uncommon picture here. Okay. If you were over lived in southern England in the some fall and summer of uh, 1940, you would look up in the sky and see this going on. Okay. These dogfights between the Messerschmitts and the Spitfires and the Hurricanes and so forth. 
guy. Um, and guys, Britain is known for rain and stormy weather. That summer, the skies were very clear, which really allowed the British to shoot down German bombers. Okay, uh, it's almost as if there was divine intervention, or something like that. Okay, now let me go to the next slide. Okay, of course, here's Churchill. Now, Churchill never left, never left London uh, during the raid. The British refer to this as the Blitz. Okay, this this six month period is known as the Blitz. All right, ladies. Your age were sent to the farms, did I tell you this, right, to help the old men. Because the young men that used to work the farm are all in uniform, training. So young women, strong women like yourself, would go work on the farms or go to these Downton Abbeys, to these, uh, these countryside estates and take care of children or teach the kids in school and that sort of thing. Okay, so every Briton is affected here. Man, woman, and child is affected. 48 million people. Now, Churchill, you can go to London today, and these are called the War Cabinet Rooms. I'll pass this around. This is where Churchill ran the war from. In a bunker underneath, really, it's inconspicuous. It's a row of apartments. There's a park. You go down underneath it, and there's these War Cabinet Rooms. They left these rooms exactly the way they were when the war ended. So when you go visit this in London, it's like stepping back into 1945. Okay, they've left, I mean, you can see Churchill's bed right there in the map room. Churchill liked to work late at night and then stay in bed, work from bed till about 11 a.m. and then he'd get up, okay? Um, so it's kind of cool. Uh, if you ever go to London, check it out, okay? War cabinet room. So after the bombing raids, remember the first thing the Germans are going to try and bomb is the airfields. But the British have hit their plane using grass runways. So the Germans switched to bombing the cities. And then they started using incendiary bombs that would cause fires. So you had what was called the home guard. Now they had to do blackouts, guys. Now you've heard of blackouts before, yes? Guys, they took this to the extreme, okay? The home guard would fine you if you emitted any light from your home. They covered the, 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 the lights on automobiles. They turned off all the street lamps. The train cars were all blacked out. The windows of all the train cars were all blacked out, okay? Now, have any guys ever flown at night? You can see where the cities are, right? So if you turn off all the lights at night, it's hard to see them, the cities. Okay, so they took this really seriously. But the Germans could figure out where London was and so forth. And so these bombs are indiscriminate. They're dumb weapons. You don't know where they're going to land. So after these bombing raids, you can see this is Churchill right here. So the day after the bombing raid at night, Churchill is out amongst the people. The royal family stayed. They did not flee the country. They could have fled. Now, they sent some of the family jewels over to, to Canada. Okay. But they stayed. And I told you about the king's speech. You know, the king was able you know, work through that, that problem of uh, stuttering. Okay. And so they stayed. This is about morale. Guys, there were a lot of people that wanted to surrender. The fact that Churchill, royal family, they stayed in London, they stayed with the people, allowed them to have that stiff upper lip, okay, and be stubborn, okay? This is that quote by Churchill, never was so much owed to, by so many to so few. These are the pilots of the RAF, okay? Now, as we look at home defenses here, I don't know if you've ever seen photographs or you've ever seen the movie Saving Private Ryan. How many guys have seen Saving Private Ryan? Okay. You would have seen these balloons in that movie. Okay. Um, these are called barrage balloons. Okay. 
okay? Uh, obviously filled with like helium, okay? So that they float like your balloon does, right? When you get that birthday, right? Okay, now, the object of these balloons, guys, is not to sabotage German bombers like the bombers are gonna fly into them. Okay, if you're a pilot, you can see one of these. Now at night, you may not be able to see it. But you can certainly see one during the daylight hours. You're not gonna hit it, okay? The thing about these balloons is this. That looks pretty good, right? That's this right here. This is a steel cable. So as the British had radar stations all along the coastline, they would put up these balloons around targets like airfields and so forth. Remember the Stuka dive bomber that I talked to you guys about? Comes in, that really loud whistle on its wings comes down. Guys, if you have a bunch of barrage balloons around a target, those Stuka dive bombers are not going to want to fly into a bunch of steel cables. You understand? Because if your wing hits one of these steel cables, it's going to do one or two things. It's going to rip off your wing or send you into a spin and crash. Okay? At the peak, guys, they had over 2,100 of these balloons flying over England, okay? Like thousands of them, okay? So this was something. Now, who would put up these balloons? Ladies, be about five of you to put up one of these balloons, okay? And to move it if it needed to be moved. Raise it, lower it, so forth. Here's another thing you could do. As the German bombers are coming in, okay, that's my plane, okay, all right, they're going to want to fly above these balloons. They're not going to want to hit them. They're not going to want to fly through the steel cable, okay? So let's say this plane or this balloon is at 5,000 feet, okay? You're trying to shoot these down from the ground. The British had what were called ACAT guns. These are anti-aircraft guns where the shells go up and explode, creating the flak. Remember this? The flak, okay? Well, guys, knowing the altitude of the plane makes it easier to shoot these down. So they would put the barrage balloons all at a certain height, then they would know what, what altitude to get the shells to explode at. Does that make sense? Here's the thing, guys. When you're being bombed every night, when you wake up in the morning, you know you're doing something to defend yourself. As little as these effect that these balloons had, it gave people, you know, the knowledge that they were doing something to, to defend themselves. Okay? Here's another thing. If you watch The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and I'll pull up a clip here in a few minutes, okay? They go into the backyard. This is called an Anderson shovel. You dig a hole in the ground about three feet deep, okay? And the government would provide these to anybody that wanted one in London or some of the other big cities, okay? This corrugated steel, you put it together, bolt it here, okay? And in the case of an air raid, you want to get out of your house because if your house gets hit, it falls on you and you die, right? So you can get underground in these Anderson shelters, Okay, now, you can make these nice, or they're going to be rustic. You know what I mean? Like the one in the movie, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is nice. Okay? And you go to London today, and you will still see these in people's backyard. They have gardens growing up around them and stuff. Okay? They're still there. Okay? So anybody that wanted one could get one of these. Okay? This is just a picture of a fire and a building coming down. These are using incendiary bombs that would cause fires. The Germans would purposefully... Bomb during low tide, making it difficult to get water from the rivers, okay, um, to put out fires. The Thames River, which runs through London, okay. I got more. All right. Now, if you were wealthy, you didn't want to go out into your backyard during a bombing raid, you could get a Morrison shelf. Now, this is like this table right here is not real strong. But this one is, this is made out of steel, okay? Put up some chicken wire right here, okay? And if a bomb hits your house, yeah, the house comes down, but it's not going to collapse this box, 
There's a mattress in here so you can sleep in your house and feel safe even if your house gets hit by a bomb. Okay, it's a Morrison show. These are radar stations uh, from um, World War II in Britain. So it's primitive. It's not like those rotating dishes we have now, Doppler radar. Okay, it's really primitive, but it worked. Okay, this is obviously the tube in London. Okay, now people would go in here during bombing raids because they wanted to get underground. The problem with going into the tube is that these are built just a few feet underneath the road. So if a 500 pound bomb hits the road, well, this is going to collapse on all these people. And that did happen. The government did not want people to do this. They did it anyway, because they wanted to get underground. Another place you don't want to go during a bombing raid is under a bridge. Now, if you're trying to avoid a uh, tornado in Kansas, you want to get up under the bridge there, you know, up, you know what I'm talking about? You've seen people do that? Like on the highways? You've never seen videos of that? Okay, so there's a bridge over the road, right? And then there's usually like concrete that goes up and you can get way up underneath there during a tornado, okay? And be protected somewhat. I've seen people do that. Or a hailstorm, right? Uh, but bridges are often targets during bombing raids, so you don't want to be under a bridge. Does that make sense? I know we live in a land where bombs don't drop, but we do have Chinese spy balloons, okay? <laughs> All right, so um, spotlights. So during the bombing raid, so you'd have a blackout, but once you started hearing the planes come, you wanted to be able to shoot them down. So you would have spotlights. Okay, that's what these are here. Guys, okay, trying to spot them so that they could shoot at them. Here's a good picture of the spotlight. You guys ever seen one of these? Like, Bengals used to do it. Like when they'd open a new store, they'd get one of these spotlights, and you could see it from all over the city. A guy live out east, is downtown, you see this big spotlight. It's got, you guys ever seen one of these? They're kind of cool, okay? This is the uh, British ACAT gun, the, the anti-aircraft gun, okay, that would try and shoot down the bombers. They actually got pretty effective with that. Here's some of the kids. Um, they would generally be given one suitcase. Now, this right here, this right here is not a suitcase. That's a gas mask. Okay, all the children, any British citizen that wanted one was given a free gas mask because we, they thought the Germans might use poisonous gas with their bomb, like they did during World War I. Okay, so it's, it's kind of eerie. It's kind of creepy. Got any Pink Floyd fans in here? Like Pink Floyd? Okay. Um, there's an album that Pink Floyd did called The Wall. Okay, and uh, Roger Waters who's the lead singer, one of the lead singers for Pink Floyd. His father died in World War II, okay? And so the, the album, The Wall, is a lot about World War II. And um, then the cartoon movie and a, and a regular movie on it. But um, there's lots of, you know, pictures and so forth of British children, you know, wearing gas masks. And, and that, that's kind of a creepy thing, you know what I mean? When you start seeing children... You know, we had uh, drills in the United States for bombing raids, you know, like get under the table, get under the desk, that sort of thing. Even during the 60s when we had a fear of nuclear war, they had duck and cover drills in schools. Like getting underneath your desk is going to protect you from a nuclear bomb. But we did it, okay? But they did this with gas masks uh, leading up to World War II and during World War II, okay? Um, it's, it's, it's an eerie thing uh, to see children having to do this, okay, let alone adults. All right, so uh, you see children getting off, put, being put on trains, send, being sent away from their parents. Uh, many of them would never see um, their families again, okay. So let me pull up, uh, I'm kind of, I'm going to wait to the end for videos because so YouTube doesn't stop me from posting this, okay. So I'll turn off the video.
Now, I got a few. Oh, don't do that again. Uh, come on, give me somewhere to click. Click down here. Okay. All right. Now, the British kind of get a little bit medieval here. Right? They can come up with some crazy stuff. All right. Because they think the Germans are going to invade, right? They're trying to invade by air, of course. Okay, this is actually called a parachute and cable system. So if you look at that paper I'm passing around, I found a reference to this. Um, they would put these near airfields. Okay, you see this rocket. Okay, it's going to fire up into the air. And it's going to have a parachute on the end. And yes, each one has a steel cable. Okay, so if you want to protect the target, here comes an air raid. You fire up these rockets, okay, and you basically got a wall of steel cable. Okay, now in all the research I did for that paper, I only found of one instance where this actually worked. Okay, and a plane, a German plane hit one of these. When it breaks off, there's another parachute here, okay, that pops out, creating drag. On the wing that hits it. You guys following this? Okay. It's kind of crazy, all right? But in the instance I talked about in that paper, it ripped the wing off this German plane, it crash landed, and like the townspeople came out, and the guy survived, and they grabbed the pilot, the German pilot, okay, in town stock, all right? Um, now the Germans tried to come up with these things to cut through cable on the front of their planes. It didn't work out too well for this one. Okay. That's one of their heavy bombers. It's a Yonkers 88. Okay. Now, if the Germans were successful at gaining air superiority, in phase two, the invasion took place. This would be an amphibious landing, right? Across the English Channel. All right, now. You'll notice in along the coast of England, in certain areas, this large white cliffs, right? Guys, the Germans are not going to land amphibious boats where there's large cliffs because the British can just shoot down it from the cliffs and kill them, right? So the British know generally where the Germans would land on the coast. And in preparation for that, they did two things. The Thames River comes up into London here, okay? So they had to protect the river and then certain areas of the coast. Now, they came up with this crazy idea, and I'm really glad the Germans didn't think of this. You guys know what PVC pipe is, white plastic piping? So they got a bunch of PVC pipe. They drilled holes in it, and then they put it out into the surf where they think the Germans might land. And if the Germans did approach with boats, they could pump oil into these PVC pipes, coating the surface of the water with oil, and all you need is a spark. That's what that picture is. They're testing this out. I'm glad the Germans didn't think of this on B-Day when we landed on the beaches of France. It would have been insane. Okay, our troops would have incinerated. Okay, they never got to phase two. They never actually had to employ this, but it's kind of a good idea. You know what I mean? It's like medieval type stuff. Your moat filled with like oil and fire, right? Yeah, good stuff. Now this. Now I know we live in Kansas, guys. But if you're ever on the water, Okay, there's the water, okay? You see this sticking out of the water and it's red. What is it? It's a buoy, okay? In some places you'll have red buoys and green buoys. If you're driving a boat by Kansas, stay between the red and the green buoy. 
Because if you get outside the red or the green buoy, it's shallow. And your engine or your hull of your boat is going to hit the ground under the water. You're going to come to a quick halt. Been there, done that. Yeah, I, I cruise along like 20 miles an hour and just like <sighs> hit the sandbar. Okay. Stay between the red and the green. Okay. Now, in the Thames River, this looked like a buoy, but underneath it, that. Now, these pontoons are filled with water. You pump the water out, and then this thing would rise up out of the sea, and you'd have machine guns and artillery on top of it, shooting at the German Navy as they came up the Thames River. Those are still out there. One guy climbed up there and claimed it as a country. <laughs> okay. They're still out there in the Thames River. Okay. It's a pretty cool idea. Kind of expensive, right? To build something like that. All right. But the British had, you know, from the end of World War One to 1940, guys, they had a lot of time to think about all the things of an invading modern army. And they came up with a lot of good ideas. So, like, once the bombing started, guys, they tore down every street sign in Britain was torn down. So if they landed paratroopers in, there would be no street signs to guide them to London, to, to Manchester, to Liverpool. There's no sign. And as you guys know, one of the greatest games that we play, golf, was invented in Scotland, right? And there's a lot of golf courses in England. Well, that's easy for tanks to, and armies to move across golf courses. So, remember Dragon's Teeth? Did I show you Dragon's Teeth? We talk about Dragon's Teeth? Okay, you go to, uh, you go to uh, Target, okay? Picture and you're driving up to the parking lot in Target. They get those big red balls out in front of the store. Well, underneath those is a concrete post. So if some idiot tries to drive the car into the target, it's going to hit the dragon's teeth and stop. You understand? You can't drive a tank through there because there's dragon's teeth. Follow me? Okay. So dragon's teeth were employed, but guys, making a bunch of concrete pillars is expensive and time-consuming. So what the British did is they just emptied their junkyard at the golf course. They just brought out all these old cars and trucks and stuff, refrigerators, and lined the golf courses with them so that an army couldn't move across. It was a mess. Okay. They thought of everything you could think of to defend their island. Okay. And I had some pretty cool story. And they survived it. Okay. Um, and they held off the Germans. And guys, you know what that means in the long run. That means once we get into this thing, We've got a staging area 20 miles off the coast of the, uh, of the continent to retake and liberate Europe and change the course of human history. Okay? This changes the course of human history. All right? We could all be speaking German, Japanese. I don't know. All right? So I'm going to show some videos. So I'm going to turn this off. Um, and. If, if we have a few minutes, I'll keep going. If not, then we'll just finish it there and we'll move on. We're going to come back across the pond. It's time for another presidential election. 1940. Okay. Yes.